I want you to go back in your mind. I want you, I want to put the text in context. These are the people of God, but they haven't really been the people of God for a long time. They have been in Egypt 430 years, but the last 400 years they have been enslaved. Now we consider the fact that 40 years is typically in scriptures a generation. 10 generations are living off of the memory of God. There is some memory of God left because he, they, they knew enough about him after 10 generations to still call on him. But their, their, their faith and their theology and their understanding of God is diluted by time and polluted by association with the Egyptians. This is proven because later when they get in the wilderness and they try to build an image of God, they build the image of the Egyptians' God because who you hang out with does affect you. And yet with just a little bit of faith that they had left enough to call on God by, by reason of the intense bondage that was placed on them, they cried unto God and God heard them. They were struggling, but God heard them. They were broken, but God heard them. They didn't even have full understanding of who he was, but God heard them and sent Moses to deliver them. And as they began to leave, Pharaoh changed his mind, uh-oh, is right. And as they're trying to escape and they're trying to flee, Pharaoh now sets out to take them back. At least that, maybe kill them. This is not a democracy. There are no court systems. There will be no litigation. They can't file charges. Whatever Pharaoh decides to do to them is done. So as they are fleeing and they sense Pharaoh coming, who knows what is going to happen? And being on the run, the vulnerability of not being protected, having neither social or economic power or political status or a voice to fight back. And here comes a bigger force coming against you than you've ever had on 600 chosen chariots and you walk in. You can hear the hoof prints of the chariots of your past about to overtake you. And they're on horseback and you got on a pair of Nikes. The Lord will fight for you. Watch it. You need only be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Come on, give me the rest of it. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. The Egyptians will know, they will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Because the Lord said, tell Israel to move on. But I'm scared, Lord. Move on. But I don't know what's going to happen. Move on. But I'm in danger, Lord. Move on. But I'm feeling vulnerable, Lord move on. How do you keep it moving when all hell is breaking loose in your life? How, how can, can God set this situation up and put me, if you love me, how could you put me in a situation like this and you know I'm human and you know I'm scared and yet you still say move on. I know the conditions are not everything that you want them to be. I know all the circumstances are not the way you would like for them to be. I know that there are impending dangers that threaten your progress. I know that you don't have the insurance of an outcome. And when you don't have insurance, it is difficult to have assurance. All you have is God's command in your life that God said, keep it moving. See, some of you are crying out in distress but you have to understand other people look at you and say you're whining but they don't understand you're not running from horses you're running from 600 chosen chariots 
Satan has shot his best shot trying to take you down. And you're not in trouble because you're weak. You're not in trouble because you're not consistent. You're in trouble because the enemy has loosed assassins to utterly annihilate you. And you are in a fearful atmosphere. And you're moving forward, but you're under attack. You can, you can see where you're gaining ground, but you keep looking back because you know that, that you got to keep moving because you got something chasing you. Somebody in this room has got a devil to fight. Deliver us from evil. These people are fleeing from oppression and they're going where they've never been to do something that they have never done with someone leading them that they have never met. Moses has been gone 40 years. It's not like he's been hanging out at Starbucks with these people. And they are up under his leadership. And he has led them to a scary place. I would like to submit for your consideration that you are not living until you have been living in a scary place. You don't know who you are until you've been in a scary place. You don't know what God can do until you've been in a scary place. You don't know what faith is until you've been in a scary place. The presence of faith is not the absence of doubt. That doubt and faith can live in the same space. I believe you, but I'm worried. I trust you, but I'm nervous. I know it's going to be all right, but I'm still up at two o'clock in the morning. I don't care how many scriptures you know. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care if you can quote the entire New Testament. There are some things that can happen in your life that makes your heart start beating in your chest until it looks like your dress is jumping. And you do like Peter and you say, Terrace thou not that we perish? We like to think that people are good or evil and right and wrong or up and down or believers or unbelievers, but the truth of the matter is believers have doubt and they get scared sometimes. But when you hear the hoof prints of something that you dreaded, that you had had 400 years of trauma with and you finally thought you got away, and all of a sudden you hear the hoof prints of something trying to overtake you that you have dedicated and risked everything in your life to escape. It's hard to be cool and scared. And you say, Lord, I wish I was more like them. Stop praying prayers where you wish you were more like people because you can't tell what's going on inside of me by looking at my face. The truth of the matter is, I can look cool and still be frightened out of my wits. Pharaoh had absolute power. He had no Congress, he had no Senate, he had no Supreme Court, he had nobody to check him. He could kill him. And absolute power produces absolute terror. If I know I'm totally at your mercy and I don't know how things are gonna end up, it's terrifying. 